Welcome to the session Issues in Access and Discovery. My name is Maja Dolinar. I come from the Slovenian Social Science Data Archive at the University of Ljubljana, and I will be chairing the session. Uh, before we start, there are some housekeeping rules. Uh, the session is being recorded, and all attendees are muted with cameras turned off by default. During Q&A, you will have the possibility to ask a question by raising your hand, and we will give you the right to speak. Please note again that this session is being recorded, so if in case you do not want to appear with video on, you should turn off your camera while asking a question. Questions can also be asked in the Q&A section. This is the preferred method, so please write your questions there and not in the chat. Due to the GDPR, you cannot see the list of other attendees, so we would like to encourage you all to say hi in the chat to see who is here. Uh, there are three presentations in our session, as you have seen in the program. Each presenter will have 15 minutes to present their paper, and this will be followed by five minutes for discussion. Uh, we can now start with the first presentation. Uh, the first paper is by Lorraine Adam and Constant Hammer and is entitled Access Control for Scientific Use Files Under New Regulations. Um, Lorraine Adam has a background in sociology with a specialization in survey techniques. She has experience as a research officer in the private and public sectors, and she has been a research engineer at ADISP for three years now. Constance Hammer works at the French Institute for Demographic Studies, as, as known as INED, uh, in the Research and Service Department. She is a member of the INED Data Lab for Data Documentation and Dissemination. So the floor is yours. You can share your screen and your presentation. Thank you. Okay. Yes, it's okay. You can just put it on full screen to share only the presentation. Yeah, perfect. Um, hello, uh, everyone. Uh, we want uh, to show you how we have had to change our dissemination process with uh, the regulation change with the constants uh, who work at the National Institute for Demographic Study. And uh, uh, I will start uh, by presenting our documentation and dissemination work. Then I will present the dissemination rules for the different types of files. Finally, Constance will present the new process to you. Um, the mission of Ketlet Projet d'eau diffusion is to give access to data produced in France. Projet d'eau brings together different institutions, four providers, uh, ADIS, INED, CDSP, and CSD. Two of them are also producers, INED and CDSP. Uh, and the university data platform, which are relays in university for users, researchers, and students. My colleague will present the co collaborative work to you tomorrow morning. The catalog uh, offered is various. There is a lot of references. It contains official statistic data produced by INSEE and the other ministry, data from public research organizations, and also in international data access. The main objective of Projedo is to develop the culture of data, so it ensures that data is easily accessible to the scientific community both researchers and students who are in university or research organizations in France and abroad. Now here are the steps in our work to develop the use of social science in the humanity and social science. 
start, we collect the data, document it with the DDI standard. Then we disseminate the data and answer user questions. ADISP and INED use NESTA to their documentation according to the VDI standard, and CTSP use NAO database. Now let's look at the rules that we must follow for the dissemination of data. As you certainly know, there are different types of files that differ according to the level of detail of the variables. Public use files contain aggregate variables. At the opposite, the secure use files contain original data. The scientific use files specially created for the research with a good level of detail are intermediate between the two other types of files. The dissemination of data is subject in France to two laws. The law for Digital Republic, which aims to guarantee access to public data to as many people as possible. In the GDPR, which also respect for the protection of private life and necessitates that statistical confidentiality be answered. Also, the scientific use files don't contain nominative information. The cross of certainly detailed variables could lead to re-identification. So the user of this data must also undertake to respect the rule of statistic confidentiality. The secure use files are disseminated by CISD. The public use files are disseminated by several institutions like uh, INSEE or Data Pango. For the scientific use file, we therefore have to change our working process to include the Statistics Confidential Committee. We answer compliance with the rule, what constants will now present to you. So, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, as Lauren said, scientific use files are under two different rules between open access and restricted access. So we need a very specific procedure to frame access to those files. And this new complex procedure is a big part of our job at INED and ADISP because we are data distributors and we wish to simplify that at some point in the future. In this specific procedure, we are working with the Statistical Confidentiality Committee, which is a French institution that ensures compliance with the rule of statistical confidentiality. The Statistical Confidentiality Committee gives individual accreditation to access scientific use files. We said earlier that we are under the GDPR rules, so formalities with respect to the GDPR regarding data access are independent from the committee ones and need to be additionally dealt with. We receive the data request through the common Ketley Projet d'eau diffusion application for CDSP, ADISP and INET data files. To order some data files, it's free, but users need to create a profile. If the user requests public use files, he or she will receive that after a few days. But for the scientific use files, here come the specific process. For any data request, the user profile has to refer to a researcher, teacher researcher or student with an affiliation to a public research institution, university or school 
and an institutional email address. The user has to submit a coherent research project explaining why he or she needs those scientific use files. As distributor, we individually and manually check those user profiles and requests into the application, and we can dialogue with users through the application to make sure their profile and projects are OK. And when they are, we send two types of commitment form to the user, and we will develop that point at the end of the presentation. But at the same time, during verification of the user profile, outside of the application come the role of the Statistical Confidentiality Committee. We said that the user has to have an affiliation to specific institution and this institution should be on the list of authorized institution of higher education and research. ADISP and INED as distributor check the institution list for every user profile and engage in a dialogue with the Statistical Confidentiality Committee if some institutions are not on the list because additions are possible. So the Statistical Confidentiality Committee manages the authorized institution list. In addition to his institution, the user should be personally authorized to access scientific use files. We refer to an individual list of authorized people out of the application, and there are two possibilities. User is already authorized, and it just has to sign the distributor's commitment forms to complete his request and access the files. Or user is not authorized yet if he never requested any scientific use files since this new procedure. And in this case, the user has to sign the Statistical Confidentiality Committee Privacy Commitment Form and the Distributor's Commitment Forms. In this last case, case there is a several weeks delay until validation for a first request. Otherwise, there is only a few days to wait before accessing the data files. The Statistical Confidentiality committee privacy commitment form look like that and it gives a unique and nominative accreditation for any scientific use files request to come if the user is in an institution from the list. The user agrees to several obligations such as do not transmit the data files to another person, respect the statistical privacy or destroy data files after the research is complete. And the INED or ADISP privacy commitment forms look like that. And on the rest of the page, we cannot see here, but the user agrees to several obligations as well, almost the same than before. The, for, the, sorry, the user has to sign one or two forms depending on the research project, one form for each distributor because this form is related to the requested data files. So here is an INED example with scientific use files distributed by INED. However, if the user requested also a disk file for the same project, he has to sign an ADISP forms as well. Forms exchange happens in the data request application. Then we wait for the Statistical Confidentiality Committee agreement for scientific use files access. And that happens outside of the application because it does not concern every Ketle Projet de Diffusion data files. Back to the application, when the complex agreement procedure is complete, we as distributors give access to the scientific use file and the user receives a message and can download documentation and data files. We said complex because this specific procedure is in and out the data request application and requires, among other criteria, a list of authorized institutions and a list of individually accred accredited people. In the future, we expect to establish a connection to the EduRAM user base so we could automatically check the institutional email address for teacher and students. And we also expect to integrate the individual statistical confidentiality agreement information into the application 
in order to check accreditation more quickly into the application for users who are already authorized. Ketle Projet de Diffusion is currently working on a new data request application using Dataverse and DDI 2.5. Thank you for listening and here are our contacts and Maya would now, will now see if you have any question. Yes, thank you very much for your presentation. I can stop uh, sharing. Yeah. So I see there are no questions in the question and answer box. So if anyone would like to raise something, please you can do so by raising your hand and we can unmute you or you can write your questions in the Q&A. So does that, okay. Does anyone have a question? We have a question, okay. So we have a question from Daniel Bella. Thanks for your presentation and the great insights into your dissemination procedures. I have a question. How, to, how, to you, how do you deal with users that want to archive the data to maintain reproducibility? So it can't comply with the obligation to erase the data after con conducting research. Lorraine and Constance, you can also see the question in the Q&A. And you have to unmute yourself to answer. Lorraine, do you want to answer? You are muted. She won't. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, they can uh, do download the data a long time after the project. So they don't need to keep the data uh, on their uh, computer because the data are al always uh, uh, on, on their profile. They can uh, download uh, it uh, two years after. or not <laughs> yeah we can't really hear you that clearly because i don't know you, you probably don't have a mic close to you oh. so you, you're Please. you're breaking a bit so and we also have another comment by daniel daniel and the users the users understand and accept this I think I, I can answer. The user understand it because we explain that to them and they have to accept this. I mean, this is the procedure or the fact that they need to respect the, the rules and commitment rules. Could you maybe rephrase your question? I mean, the, they have to accept the procedure and the delay if there is, if this is the first request because we cannot then send them the data if they are not accredited. It is the answer you, you are looking for. Okay, do we have another question? or somebody would like to talk and pose the question live? I guess not. Oh, I have maybe a question. So how do you monitor uh, the actual use of the file you send them to the users? How do you monitor that they are really following uh, all the, the rules that they have to maybe to delete the file after they're using it, or how do you have this procedure taken care of? We cannot be sure that erase the data after the project is over, but they signed two different papers and they commit themselves to those rules. So, I guess it's a um, matter of, I don't know. 
ethical standards, yeah, to following yeah. <laughs> the rules that you yeah. commit to. The good scientific but research, basically. Yeah. When the the data files are downloaded and in the possession of user, we cannot really know what they do mm. with those data, but we we hope they follow the rules because they commit to those rules. Okay. Thank you. So I guess we it's time to move on to the next uh, presentation. Um, so the second paper is by Rafael Floreau and Palima Bakia. The title is Documentation of Confidential Data Made Available by the CASD. Halima Bakia has been a data manager at CASD for three years now. Uh, she joined the Secure Access Center through the CNRS to contribute to the evolution of the online documentation of the data made available by CASD. In parallel to this documentation task, she guides users in their access procedures and accompanies them on data related issues. So please, can you, if you can share your screen, Halima, and make your presentation. Okay. Is this okay? Yes, it's fine. Okay, thank you. Well, hello, my name is Alima Bakia. I work at the CISD and I will present to you with Raphael Fleureux the documentation of confidential data made available by the CISD. Following a brief review of the CISD's operations and mission, I will ad address the reason why the CISD has chosen to realize this documentation. Then I will list the choices and steps that have been taken to do it. I will show you the result on our website. And finally, I will share some idea ideas on the next steps for the documentation at the CISD. First, the CISD, the Centre d'Accès Sécurisé aux Données, is a French center for secure data access. Its main mission is to organize and set up services of highly secure access to confidential data for users pursuing non-profit research, study, or evaluation purpose. So how does it work? Unaccredited users access the data through I could edit the data for a dedicated hardware thin client, the SD box. This box is linked by a secure tunnel to the user's project work environment called a secure bubble. Each bubble is isolated from all the other bubbles. Uh, users cannot insert or export data from his environment without checking by CISD teams. Now some key figures about the CISD. From its creation, more than 2,000 users have worked on the CISD in more than 700 research projects. This project have led to more than 300 publication of articles reports and theses. Data available at the CISD are diverse. They are administrative as well as survey data. A wide range of topics is covered. Companies as well as health, justice, migrations, or agriculture. Currently, the CISD provide access to more than 350 data sources that are mainly produced by INSEE and statistical departments in ministry, but also from different public institutions. So why do the documentation? The main purpose is to identify relevant data for a project. Users who wish to access data need to know their content and to know whether they correspond to their research subject before submitting the application for their project. The procedure for accessing data is very detailed and quite long. Users should know what they will have access to in order to avoid undertaking unnecessary steps. This is why we have decided to publish some, some information. 
Moreover, no data provider whose data are made available by the CSD offers this information online in such detail. I will now outline the choice that we, have, that we made to implement this documentation. <coughs> we choose to do the DDI standard. We could have documented in another format since the information that we decide to publish is concise, but we wanted a standard format in which exchange are possible, which is the case with DDI. We carry out the documentation with the Collectica design software. Firstly, because it integrates the DDR lifecycle. And secondly, because INSEE, our main data provider, is also working on the documentation of the data it produced on Collectica design. This will allow us in the future to receive information from INSEE and integrate it into our process. Which information to document? The purpose was to provide as much information as possible in the shortest possible time. We had to make some arbitration in order to progress rapidly on the display of documentation. As we mentioned earlier, Android of data sources are available via CSD from more than 20 providers. Two choices have been made. The first, to document only the most recent available year of each data source. Second, to document first the labels of all variables for all data sources. Then, we had it for each source, the code list, and their meaning. If a new year of a data source is sent to us after we have documented the labels of variables, we document it entirely again, variables and code lists. We have been carrying out this work for two years now. Currently, 90% of the sources are documented at the label level and 60% of the sources are documented at the code list level. This represents more than 143,000 described variables. So in practice, how do we do? The highly detailed nature of the data forces, forces us to work in a secure bubble. A bubble dedicated to the documentation was therefore set up. Collectica Designer was installed offline in this environment, which is not the common use that is made of it. All the documentation is thus done in the bubble. We carry out this documentation based on the, <coughs> sorry, on the document provided by the data producers, which can sometimes prove to be incomplete. The data producers are informed of our work and are invited to check and, if necessary, correct the results of the documentation on our website. We exchange with them, ask them questions if needed, which may have lead, led to the correction of data or documentation files made available to users. <coughs> Once the documentation is finished, we extract an XML file in the DDI 3.2 firmware from Collectica Designer, and we export this file outside the secure bubble, and then upload it to an internal application. This application allows afterward a display on the CSD website. We have chosen to integrate the documentation directly on our website. We did the layout from the XML file we extract from Collectica Designer. Given the succinct nature of the display information, this does not require for the moment the configuration of a complete portal like the one offered by Collectica. Since we have been working by progressive steps, 
we were able to adapt the layout according to the element to be displayed. Moreover, since internet access in the bubble is impossible, we could not have published information on a portal directly from the Collectiva designer insta installed in the bubble. As the documentation process was established, we were able to work with Algenta team and in a relation with INSEE to add functionality to the software and facilitate our work, mainly to be able to apply information on her database from another one to apply the information already available. Here are the DDI elements that we fill, the, the title and the description of the year version of the data source, the list of database and their description, the list of variables of each database on their meanings, the associated code list and their meanings, but not for numeric variable. I will now show you the result of this documentation on our website. So here is the table listing of all the data sources made available by the CSD. For each data source, all of the all the years and the information on the accreditation authority for the data access are indicated. If we choose a source, for example, census, a population of uh, the population census, Sorry, are you are you sharing the presentation, or you want to show us something on um, in the browser? Don't see my... Yeah, because then you will have to share the browser and not the presentation. Okay. You have to change the application you're sharing. Thank you. Do you see now? Yes, it's fine now. Now we're in the browser. Okay. So I back. I said here is the list, the table listing all the data sources made available by the CSD. There are many, many sources. For each data source, all the variable, all the all available years and the information of the, on the accreditation authority for the data access are indicated. So for the census, if we choose, you can see that we arrive on a new web page describe, describing this source. You will find here the title of the year, with which the documentation is published, an abstract, and below the database that are available in the secure environment with a description of each database. When clicking on a database, you get the list of all variable. So their name, their label, their code list and their label. It is possible to carry out a search. For example, here, I'm going to search NAF, activity classification. For this variable, the code list referred us to a website that details this classification. If we return on the website, you can switch from one database to another. And as we mentioned, 
clear the data is confidential, therefore to respect data confidentiality, we do not display descriptive statistics. It is possible to download a document in a CSV format containing the information available online. This is what the CSV file looks like. I'm going to share. Here is the CSV. I'm going to return on the web on the CSV website. So another information is available on this page, a persistent identifier, DY which allow, allows to identify in a unique way the data in order to cite them in a publication. When you click on this link, it will take you to a page presenting the DOI and the associating citation. So the DOI is here and the citation. That was for, for the website. And return on the presentation. So what are the next steps for the document, the data documentation at the CISD? Finalize the documentation of all data sources at the code level. As a reminder, 60% of data sources is documented to the code level and we have new documenting while we're serving new data around 50 per year. Document all available years at the CISD, which represent more than 2,500 data products. We will then have to modify the current display on our website, which allow us for the moment to view only one year. Translate the documentation into English. Make available the structured documentation inside the bubble so that the user can refer to it. And the CSD is working in particular with INSEE and the AMS project team that documents with Collectica Designer the data produced. We should eventually collect two types of information, a more detailed description of the data, abstract and geographic scope, and a DDI documentation of the data files. The documentation of data sources is a long term work and we still have a lot to do. So thank you for your attention and uh, do you have any question? Thank you very much, Halima. We do have thank a you. question from the audience. We have Daniel and I will put you now the ability to talk so you can uh, ask your question. Daniel? You have to unmute yourself. I don't know if you're talking already. Okay, I don't know. Daniel Bot is supposed to be asking a question, but I don't know if he can hear me now or if he has any issues in accessing. We do have a comment in the chat that was sent to all panelists. If you can maybe uh, expand on that. And we also have a question in the Q&A. Mm -hmm. No, it's not Daniel Bella, it's Daniel Buck. from the uh, DZHW, this was a raised hand, so I don't know. 
if it was a mistake. Okay, does anyone uh, have a question from other participants? I guess nobody is, has enough courage to <laughs> ask you a question. Thank you. Okay, if not, then we can just continue with the last presentation. Thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you for your nice presentation and all the, the things you shown on the browser. Uh, so the last paper is by Karam Abdullahad and Klaus, Klaus Peter Klaas. It is entitled Explore Data, the Search, Access, and Recommend Social Sciences Surveys Metadata. Uh, Karam Abdullahad is currently a research scientist at Gezi's Leibniz Institute for the Social Sciences. He is mainly engaged in the Explore Data, my ESS projects. He has a PhD degree in computer sciences from the University Grenoble Alp uh, in France. His research interests include information retrieval, machine learning, deep learning, and text mining. He taught in several universities and participated in developing several tools. So Karam, the floor is yours. You can share your screen and do your presentation. Thank you. Uh, let me just uh, share the screen. You, you can see my screen? Yes, it's fine. So uh, should be okay now, the full screen? Yes. Okay, nice. So. Uh, Hi, uh, my name is Karam Ablahad. Um, I'm working as a research scientist at Gises Leibniz Institute for the Social Science in Cologne. Um, um, today I will talk about Explore Data, which is one of the internal project of Gises uh, to search and access and recommend social science survey metadata. So I think most of you or even all of you know uh, DDI, which is a solid uh, metadata encoding or metadata description um, standard that is used to do, to encode or to do, to document um, social science metadata. Actually, DDI is very solid. It's very powerful to represent this data, but the, it is not well designed to access this data or to uh, make uh, this data usable for a human. It's mainly used to, de to, to, um, to describe the data for archiving or even later on um, to, uh, uh, for, for machine related um, activities. So as you can see, it's, a, it's an XML file. So it is a machine understandable format rather than user friendly. So if you give the, the XML file to a user, he will I think he or she will will forcibly struggle to understand what is going on inside uh, inside this file. Um, information inside the DDI XML file is scattered over the whole XML file. For example, the reference is in one place in the in the XML file, and the information that is related to this refer reference is is uh, is stored in another place within the XML file. Um, and also many information are only uh, partially encoded in, in, the, in the XML file and not fully, like for example, uh, the country. Normally what, what is mentioned in what is encoded in the, within these files is the, is, the, is the country code, but not the full country name. And many other information also are only partially encoded or implicitly encoded. So the big goal of this, of this project was it's to make this, uh, to make the data collection uh, or, or, uh, or social science metadata easily accessible, findable and searchable. So it's a kind of, um, of uh, building a search portal like maybe Google or any kind of, of search engine that enable users to search within this metadata or the metadata that are already described uh, using DDI. So it seeks, uh, 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 Explore Data seeks to replace a bunch of tools currently used at GISSES like DPKSR, Zakat, or many other tools by one easy to use tool. So 
the one uh, the headline of this project is to make metadata searchable and accessible. For more details, um, Explore Data Project is to develop state-of-the-art and user-friendly web-based search portal. So it should al allow users to search, browse for studies and variables across data sets, and also should allow users to compare variables. So given a variable, the system is able to give or to, uh, to show to users a list of similar variables or the variables that are used for the used in the same context. And also uh, uh, the system allows users to save and download search, uh, search result and documents. So you can imagine it as like uh, you are shopping data. So you, you go to the system, you, you search for variables and, and uh, studies, and then you can add the document that you find to your shopping cart. And then by the end of the session, you can download this shopping cart. Uh, I will talk during this presentation, I will talk about three main uh, points. Uh, I will talk about the functionalities and some screenshots from the, from the portal. I will talk about the challenge of moving from DDI uh, XML files to something to the index or to something is searchable. And also I will talk about some steps that are still in progress. So the first functionality of this web portal is of course, uh, like a Google style search for studies. So you have, uh, you can type any, uh, uh, any query, any textual query like politic in this, in this screenshot, and then you get the list of a ranked list of studies. Of course, we, we support both English and German. Uh, so this is, this is, a, this is a screenshot for, um, for, for, uh, for English query, but also you can, uh, uh, do a uh, politic in German also, and you will receive um, a list of uh, a ranked list of study uh, according to their German content. And also, uh, beside the, the Google side, we support the filters or the facets, which is like e commerce style. If you are currently going to Amazon, of, for example, and you are shopping, then you search for something, you get a big list of, uh, of products. And then you have on the left hand side, you have like list of filters. Then you can reduce the number of showing, uh, the number of showing products to, uh, to make to make it easier to find your 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 product. So here is exactly the same logic. We use uh, six main um, filters. So you can filter the result list or the studies result list using their Chester classification, using their study collection. For example, you only need to show uh, studies from Albus, for example, and uh, uh, filtering studies according to their to their conducting years, according to their interview language, according to the geographical zone where the study is conducted, and also according to the methodology. This screenshot is one of these filters. So here you can, for example, filter studies according to their mode of collection. So you can see it is a hierarchical uh, filter and also you can filter using the sampling procedure, time method or any kind of sub uh, of methodology sub filters. That was on the study level. On the variable level, we support, uh, we support of course the uh, full text search or the full text query to retrieve a ranked list of variables. So you can also uh, search for variables uh, using English queries or German German queries. So this is this is a screenshot for searching uh, for money, but also you can search for guild and you get another ranked list of variables. Um, this is the main functionality for variables, but for variables we have another another functionality which is um, recommending similar variables. So um, if the user open um, if a user open a variable or click on the variable to see its details, on the right hand side he will get a list of similar variables. Or, so similar variables means variable. Um, here we are not talking about variables only variables that are coming from the same uh, data collection, but are talking about variables that are similar in content. So maybe they are asking the same question or similar question, sorry, or maybe they have um, um, a similar list of answer categories and so on. So we, it's a kind of um, content-based similarity between variables. Uh, so this is, this is also one of the main functionality concerning variables or that, that works up on variables. 
This is the main functionality that's currently available for uh, Explore Data Portal. Um, let me now talk about the, our index structure and how we move these DDI XML files into something searchable, and also the challenge that we uh, that we met during this uh, during this path or uh, along of this path. Uh, the content of our index is uh, we index studies from 193 collection, different collections. We have more than six. 6,000 studies and 215,000 variables and 104 variable questions. All are indexed in our, um, in our portal on our system. We have, of course, we support, of course, four type of documents uh, in our Elasticsearch index. We are, we are supporting collection, we are supporting study, variable, and the question. Of course, the only two types that are searchable by the system currently, they are the study and the variable. The variables, collection and question are used only to support these two, uh, these two search activities on study and variables, but they are ready to be used in the future if we decide to search also to allow user to search for collection or to search for questions. Uh, and also uh, uh, the question part or the question document of this, of this system is also used in another project. It's um, European Question Bank, I think, EQB. We tried you saw that um, uh, DDI is a highly structured document. It's an XML file and it's very structured and you have, you have the data. So we, when, when we moved from, from DDI to something searchable, we, uh, we were obliged to, uh, to, um, uh, to abandon a, a bit of this, of this hierarchy. That's why um, we, uh, we lose a bit of information. But at the same time, we try to keep as much structure as possible of DDI. That's why we do not, um, we do not um, index, uh, for example, study metadata as one block of text, but no, it is actually, uh, uh, it is actually distributed on list of fields. So we have, um, we, have the, we have the study title, we have the study year, we have the study content and so on. So any, any user, even, even without using our user interface, he can from the from the index itself, he can uh, uh, um, he can like uh, um, expect or he can see the structure of uh, the original structure of the DDI file. This is important because then later on we need to verify all this all this activity and this need to be also verified by social scientists. Uh, and also in our indexing process, we support multilingual content, especially I'm talking about English and German. So there is always two version of textual content. Uh, for example, uh, study title is always saved in English and German. Of course, it's saved if this information um, are already available because in, in, in so many studies, we only have, uh, we only have uh, um, English metadata documented. In other study, we have only German metadata documented and so on. Uh, and, um, and as a special case for question, we even index, um, index uh, content in all available language, uh, the, the interview language of this question. So uh, we have even, uh, even questions are documented with 30 or even 40 different languages. All these languages are considered in our index and um, they are accessible. We were also obliged to, uh, to manage missing values. Uh, as you may know, it's it's a bit rare to have a very clean metadata documentation. So there 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 is always uh, missing values here and there. So we were we were obliged to deal with this missing value uh, and also deal with um, uh, with that with a. Uh, with the idea that uh, the content is only available in one language and not in both language, English and German. Uh, so, um, so it's a, um, like a pre-processing step before going to the to the portal. It's cleaning and um, cleaning and increasing the quality of, of metadata. And also, we remove duplication if we have uh, um, docu duplication in the docu in the documented uh, data. We already also uh, removed all this duplication. In addition to all that, uh, during our indexing process, we created a new content. Uh, 
so we, it's not only the uh, the DDI XML files. It's what we use to extract information from it, but also we added information to it. We created new content. For example, we build uh, we build study citation according to a predefined standard. We link uh, studies and variables with their corresponding codebook tables. We uh, replace all the country and language codes with their full names. We uh, also preserve uh, the variable order or the question order within the questionnaire, how they are asked to user. So all these information that are, that are either not documented in DDI or partially documented in DDI, we recreate fields for them. So it's a kind of data enrichment also. So it's data cleaning, it's also data enrichment. So this is the main the main thing of uh, of um, of how we built the the, the index based on the um, XML DDI documents. Of course, all what everything that I had talked about is already done. Uh, but let me now um, share with you um, two or three points about what is actually in progress currently. Um, one of the thing that is in progress currently is query preprocessing. Um, as as I show as I have shown before that if you enter an English um, term in the query you you get ranked list of documents with respect to this English term and now if you enter a German term you get another rank, uh, ranked list. The problem is when the when the when the study or when the metadata itself is only documented in one language, which is which is mostly the case. That so you have a study in. All, only documented in English or only documented in German. So now, if you have a study documented only in English and you ask it, uh, you ask the system with a query in German, so the system will not be able to, to match a query with 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 um, with a, uh, with the document or with the study. So one one query preprocessing step would be a kind of automatic translation to transform the um, the, qu the query in both language English and German for example if the user asks for money we can automatically add guilt to to the to the query and then uh, in that case the system should be able to match this query with uh, either English or German document or to both of them so this is this is also one step uh, under um, uh, under consideration, the other one we are um, we are still uh, seeking for variable statistical information. Um, uh, I mean here the codebook tables. So we are currently have some uh, low-level codebook tables that are associated with variables. But what we are aim to do is actually extract some summarization from these codebook tables and show them with variables. Um, this is not an easy task because the data is not available or it's not in the format that we wish so it's um, it's a huge step but we are still we are still struggling to do that but it's it's on our agenda uh, so that's it for me thank you and if you have any question please do not hesitate to ask okay thank you karam so does anyone have a question that you can raise your hand or you can write in the q a Yeah, maybe a question. Um, you were talking about dynamic filters and that they are based on uh, topic classifications and CVs for methodology, which are basically these DDI uh, CVs and CESDA topic classifications. For the ones that are from CESDA, know that there, there is in the development is currently the vocabulary service of CESDA, where, which has all these vocabularies uh, online. So I was wondering whether you have made these filters based on some sort of an API that is connected to the vocabulary service or have you made the filters somehow locally and put it in somewhere behind that you are calling out for uh, these uh, elements of the CVs if you understand what I mean. Yeah, so yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's very nice question. Actually, um, uh, what are currently what we are currently doing is uh, we are receiving uh, the list of uh, of 
of categories or classes or whatever you would like to, to call it from our um, data archive uh, department. So it is mainly, it is mainly like um, a static list. But of course, uh, since uh, we are also in-house, we are developing CV manager for Chesta, uh, for Chesta vocabulary, list of vocabulary. So it's the next step would be to link it directly to the Chesta uh, variables, uh, sorry, to Chesta uh, classification system. So any change at Chesta uh, classification system should be directly replicated on our system. But currently, no, we are dealing with a static list that are uh, coming to us from the data archive department. Okay, thank you. Uh, we do have another question by Noemi. Uh, are you planning to ask the source live, maybe the semantic web representation of the Cesareas, or do you download and index it in your Elasticsearch instance? Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's very similar to your question. Also, yeah, yeah. yeah it's uh, no, it's currently uh, it's still under progress. We are trying to deal currently with uh, uh, with a static version of uh, of uh, of Tissos, like a dump of Tissos, if you would like, um, just to test if it improved the result, it would be beneficial or not. But in case that it is uh, it is okay for us, it is decided to consider that in the project. Then I think also we need to uh, we need to integrate it or to make um, a link to it uh, with uh, with the with the live Tissot system, or with any. I think currently it's uh, Tissot is a part of a bigger uh, knowledge graph or something like this in social science. So it's not even only uh, only 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 Tissot, but Tissot is only is is only an example of what we are doing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So we have another question that come, goes to all the presenters. Uh, can you comment on how scalable your systems are? For example, if the number of studies or number of users grows rapidly. So this is for to all the, all the pre presentations. Okay, maybe I can start by myself. Uh, so it should be scalable because um, um, how to say that? Uh, the problem is not uh, the technology that we use behind the sense is um, is working on something called pagination. So, if you are looking for one hundred within one hundred document or within one hundred million document, what you will get at the at the beginning it's a list of ten documents. Then. If the user would like to go further, he has uh, the user interface tools to go there and then you click on next, for example, or the second page, and then the system will load the second page. So actually, it's it's not the size of the it's not the size of the index what is um, uh, what is control the, the the efficiency of the system or how it it is actually how much information you show to the user. So uh, considering more studies, more variables, or more question, it should should not be a, a big deal here. Okay, thank you. And maybe some other presenters for the same question. So how scalable your systems are if the number of studies or, or number of users grows? Uh, for us, it's the same. The number is not a problem. Uh, as uh, Tom Sons uh, said, we work uh, on a new application, uh, more protocol, but not uh, because of the number. Okay, and Halima? Are you still here, Halima, with us? Um, maybe I can answer. Okay. Uh, for us, it's not a problem also because, uh, uh, like we document now, it's only uh, one the latest uh, year for all uh, data, so we can add uh, as many uh, data as we as we want. Uh, we are, uh, uh, we can do it. No problem. Okay. Great. Okay, so if there are no additional questions, I don't see them anywhere. So I guess we can close this session. Uh, I would like to thank to all the presenters for their informative and also interactive presentations. So everyone, thank you also for attending this session. We had a really a, quite a nice turnout. Um, have a nice day, you all, and uh, see you in some other sessions.